This is the second screencast in a series for ME121, and we're introducing how to use MATLAB. In the first screencast, we showed how the user interface works, how to enter commands, and create plots. In this screencast, we're going to show a very important feature of MATLAB, which is the ability to create what are called M files, which store sequences of commands. M files can be thought of as subprograms that allow you to record sequences that need to be repeated, uh, to assemble them into large, uh, complicated sets of functions, or to simply have uh, an M file that does a single homework assignment. This is a very powerful feature of MATLAB, and we're going to introduce it in this screencast. Here's the MATLAB window that we're going to work in, and now we're going to notice that the uh, window to the left here says current folder. That's going to be very important. Basically, what we want to do is have a place, not this folder exactly, but have a place that we can store our MATLAB programs for this set of tasks. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to open up my ME121 folder. I've already created a folder uh, that's on the drive. So now I'm, now I'm operating in the Windows operating system here. Under my N drive, my network drive, I've created a folder called class, and in that a folder called ME121. And I'm going to create another folder called MATLAB. Um, this process of organizing your files is pretty important, and we all have different styles, but um, I don't store my files in my documents. I don't put them all in one place. Rather, I create this hierarchy. Uh, however you do it, you do need to know where you're going to store your files. So I'm going to create a folder inside of this one called um, Voltage Divider, just because that's the first one. That, that's one of the first examples we're going to use. So I've done these operations inside the Windows operating system. In other words, in the file system, MATLAB doesn't know about that file system yet or that location yet and what I want to do is work in that location so I have we have this uh, breadcrumbs across the top I'm going to click on my home directory and then find the class directory and then find the me121 directory and the MATLAB directory and the voltage divider directory I could do these manipulations in a couple different ways, but this is a very visual way to burrow through the file system. And I've got my, up at the top here, I've got my breadcrumbs to show me where I am relative to the root of the Windows file server. What I want to do is create an M file that allows me to repeat a test. So we're going to start with a very simple one, and we're going to say new script. And that opens up another window here that is where we're going to write our program. And I'm not going to use it as a script, but rather as a function. So just play along. Function sign plot. And I'll hit return a few times and put an end at the end. So the function marks the beginning, end marks the end. This is the first line and last line. You always need to start with function, and you always need to end with end if you want to write a MATLAB function. There's something called a MATLAB script, which uh, leaves out the function and end. And um, it has some of the same features, but it has some side effects that I recommend avoiding by just using a function. So let's remember how to plot the sine wave. x equals lin space 0, 2 pi. y equals sine of x. And plot x, comma y. So I have these statements that we've done before that create the sine wave and I've stored them in my M file, I'm going to save it. And this is an important other feature. Where do I save it? Well, it happens to be in MATLAB Voltage Divider, the place where the MATLAB session was when I created that folder. Here we are under MATLAB Voltage Divider. It's already given me a file name called signplot.m. That's good. I'm going to save it. These operations were done in the editor. I'm going to slide the editor over to the side and we can see that the current folder now has a function called signplot and if everything is working I can just type signplot. Pretty mundane function here but 
we'll show how you can modify this and create a more flexible approach to solving this problem, which is to plot a sine wave. Let's go back over to sine plot and at the end of the function line, open parentheses x max, and instead of making 2 pi a constant, we can put in x max. I'm going to save this. Do you remember my trick? If we typed a sine plot here, uh, it would draw in this window, and since that window is underneath, I'd have to bring it to the foreground. I can close it here manually and then it will draw on top, or I could just type it this way. Close all sine plot. Now, because I have sine plot with an input argument, I have to supply this. So let's say I wanted to do 6 times pi. Or, up arrow, 3.27 3 times pi. With a function, we can repeat these statements, and depending on what we supply it with an input argument, we can make these statements somewhat flexible. I could add x min, x max, etc., so that allows me to create a great deal of flexibility. Let's say we are happy with all this work, and we've uh, it's time to quit. We're just going to go home now. We say exit, or we could close box up here, but I just type exit, and it quits MATLAB. Now let's pretend we've come back another day. We're going to launch MATLAB. And magically, MATLAB is in sign plot. How did that, how did it remember that? Well, because I've configured my system to do this. So go to Preferences, and under General, under the first block here says Initial Working Folder. Click last working folder from previous MATLAB sessions. So that's really nice. MATLAB will remember where we were working. I can hit, if you need to change it, click here and be sure to hit apply before you hit close. And MATLAB remembers where you were if you have that setting in your preferences. Let's move on from sign plot to something maybe a bit more substantial. In this class sequences, we're going to use sensors and some, some of the sensors are variable resistance sensors. In other words, you change the environment and they change their resistance in response to that. And we know that an Arduino can't measure resistance directly, so we put the resistance sensor in a voltage divider. So here's a model of a voltage divider. R1 and R2 are two resistances, and one is the top resistance is tied to a voltage source, say 5 volts, and the bottom resistor is tied to a ground, and we're going to measure the voltage at the intermediate point. Typically, one of these resistors is variable. The output of this voltage divider, in other words, the voltage that the analog input pin would read, obeys this formula. It's the input voltage times R2, the bottom resistor, divided by the total resistance R1 plus R2. The Arduino uses its own analog to digital conversion, so on the analog input pin, we get values not in voltage, but is as an integer between 0 and 1023. So on an Arduino, we could say A out, the analog value that's output by this, is 1023 times this resistance ratio. In our sensor model, we will often have one of these two resistors variable. For the salinity sensor, we want the top resistor, R1, to be variable. So it appears in the denominator. The output that that circuit created in, in analog input units would be 1023 times R2 over R1 plus R2. I'd like to explore what happens when we have a variable R1. What sort of range of values could we expect? What we're going to do is we're going to say R2 is a fixed 10K resistor. That's common in our sensor usage in this class. And we're going to vary R1. Let's use MATLAB to predict what A out would be using this formula. To do this analysis, I'm going to create another function. Remember what we do, we say new script and type in function, let's say voltage divider. That's going to be the name. And we'll make some uh, spaces here for commands. We have end, so we've got our beginning and end. We hit save, and automatically MATLAB picks up that this function should be called voltage divider. That's an important convention about how MATLAB M files are. The, if you have a function, the 
name right after function should be the same as the name of the file with a .m on it. So I'll say save. Now what we want to do is say we have an R fixed is 10k. So 10 e to the 3 and I'll make a comment to the right. And I want to pick a range of values for these R1 at the top. So R1 this is a little tedious, but I'm going to manually enter a list of resistors, and this is going to be a vector. So 2000, so these are standard resistors. I like to add comment statements as I go. They not only help me remember what I did before, if I were to open this file up again, but they sort of force me to say, is this really what's going on? Yes, that's what I have. We can calculate the output voltage or we could calculate the analog output value. So let's do the analog output value. A out equals 1023 times resistor R2, which is the R fixed, divided by R1 plus R, R fixed. Here's our model to remind us. We have fixed resistor, which is R2, and we are having a variable resistance, R1. So that's the name of that's the formula there. And then we can plot this. So this gives me R1 as the variable, A out as the output or the y-axis, and I'm going to make a little zero or an open circle here. And I'm going to save this and I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to say close all voltage divider. Hmm, I've got a problem. It says matrix div dimensions must agree. It thinks that these are vectors that obey the rules of linear algebra. So R1 is a vector. You can't divide by a vector. But if I use a dot symbol here, that little change says instead of doing some sort of matrix operation, I'm going to take R fixed, which is a constant, and divide by a series of R1 values. And then A out is also going to be a vector. So right here, we've got a formula. I'll try again. And now I have A out, which goes between 350 and 850. So that looks good. So far, we've created a little M file here, which really just captures some work that we've done. When you're thinking about doing homework that involves MATLAB or other bits of analysis, you can encapsulate those MATLAB statements in a function M file, save them for later, and possibly modify them. Before we're done, we should probably finish this and say x label, label the x axis is R1 in ohms, and y label is analog, analog output in ohms. save this, go back to the command window to run it. And remember now, we are going to run these commands. I don't have any breakpoints. I haven't, I haven't put the little red dots to stop the execution. I can simply go up arrow to close all voltage divider, and we've plotted the data, and now we've labeled the axis in a good way. So this is um, a useful little bit of analysis that we're saving for either documentation purposes or to build upon later. Generally, when I write MATLAB programs, I work incrementally. I do a single task, get that to work, and then I add a more complex steps uh, to instead of trying to do it all at once. So let's uh, close this down. Not quitting MATLAB. I'm just going to clear the screen, and we can move on to our next sample problem. Let's do some more analysis that uh, is relevant to our current project, which is to build a fish tank which has uh, salinity control in it. We've done some research that says that our salinity sensor, the one that we're building and calibrating, has a resistance that varies with salinity like this. If we knew the salinity, say, in weight percent, and we had these constants C1 and C2, we could predict that the, the resistance of that was according to this function, C1 times salinity raised to the C2 power. We've done some research, and these values, 
for C1 and minus 0.9211 work well for a particular sensor. And when we do our analysis, which we're about to do, we get an analog output. This is what the Arduino reads as the output of our voltage divider with the salinity sensor on top. So let's do this in MATLAB. Let's construct this curve. I'm going to create a new function to do the work. and I'm going to call it salinity sensor. And we're going to end the function. So this is sort of a little preliminary work that I do. Get the function first statement, get the end last statement. And I'll save it. MATLAB is working in my current voltage divider directory. I'm going to call it salinity sensor. Great. So I need a bunch of information in order to make this happen. Uh, the first thing I'm going to have is the fixed resistor. And the fixed resistor is R2 at the bottom. So R2 equals 10K ohm. So 10E to the 3. And I'm going to make a comment statement here. R2 is fixed resistor. And I don't know what the value of R1 is yet. What I do know is I want a range of salinity values. So I'm going to say S equals lin space. This is my range I'm predicting over 0 to, to 0.15. And this is our range salinity values in weight percent. And if I knew these constants, which I do, C equals 488.6 and minus 0 0.9211. These are the curve fit constants for my sensor. If I have a range of S values in these two constants, I can now predict the resistance of the salinity sensor from equals C1 times S, this vector of values, raised to the C2 power. And I'm going to label this with a comment statement that says this is resistance of salinity sensor. So let's just get this much done, and then we'll move on to the analog output prediction. So let's plot, uh, say, resistance versus salinity, just to see how that looks. So plot uh, the x-axis is salinity, and the vertical axis is R sub S, and I'm going to plot this as a solid, well, let's say solid blue line, B for blue, dash for straight line. I'm going to save this. I'm going to come over to my command window, and I'm going to just type the name of my function, salinity sensor. Uh-oh. Incorrect dimensions for raising a matrix to a power. There's a information here, and then it gives me the error line. So this is error in salinity sensor on line 7. And it turns out that I can't take a vector, which was created here. So S equals lin space creates a vector with 100 values. I can't just raise that to a power. If I use the dot raise to a power, that says take each value in S, raise it to a power. So I'll make that correction. I have to remember to hit save. I come back here. And I can do up arrow and run this function. And I get a variation of salinity that goes from, say, 2 times 10 to 5. So that's 200, uh, kilo -ohm, 200 kilo ohms down to very low value. Um, I think this is right. This looks about right, what I would expect. Uh, and I'm going to save this. So maybe we want to modify this later. But what I really want to know is what is the analog output predicted by this variation. So I can save this uh, command for later by just turning it into a comment statement. So now let's say we're going to compute the analog reading from the voltage divider. So that analog reading depends on the various resistances. We have a R2 fixed resistor and I've got a RS which is salinity sensor um, resistance. I have a hover over this. It says it might not be used. It might not be used. Well, we're about to use it. Just a refresher of our voltage divider model. R1 is going to be our salinity sensor. R2 is going to be the fixed resistor. 
this would be the voltage output and this is the corresponding analog output of this which goes to the input a little confusing a in a out in any case this is what we predict the analog reading will be and we're going to use that formula r2 over r1 plus r2 times 1023 a out equals 1023 times and we have r2 which is the bottom r2 divided by rs which is our variable r1 plus r2 and you know what i'm going to get an error again can you anticipate what that is going to be let's um save this and see what happens we should probably try a plot let's plot salinity on the x-axis a out on the vertical axis and we'll do uh, red dash lines just because we can okay this is what we want I'm going to go back here because I have a plot window open I'll do close all salinity sensor and we've got another matrix dimensions must agree so we have to explicitly tell MATLAB that when we divide a, con a, a, a scalar r2 is a single value by a vector created here rs plus r2 is a vector we're gonna to have to put a dot right here try save up arrow and this is the trend that we're expecting let's finish up a little bit with the labels up arrow okay so we've got analog reading versus salinity this is what we're looking for so to recap in this screencast, we've shown you how to create M files or functions that can be reused. It's very handy. You can save this code. It's in this directory. You know where to find it because you located it there. And that allows you to save your work, rerun it, make it make improve it later.